and it is charging the highest price possible to each customer that you can get away with. Now, we need to talk, too, about the barriers to entry. People try to equate these with money. And the reality is money is not a good barrier. So I want to go over what the ones are. The first one is a patent. Patents are legal protection that no one can copy what you've done, typically lasting 20 years. That is a barrier you can't get around. The next one is a monopoly franchise. A monopoly franchise is a right given to an exclusive seller. Dominion Hope, for instance, has the exclusive right to sell gas in this area. It's signed by your local government. That makes them a monopoly. It's that you have the franchise to sell that product exclusively in that area. That is a way to create a monopoly. The next one is control of key inputs. Control of key inputs refers to an idea called vertical integration. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but we'll give you a real basic rundown. Okay, this is what is known as a supply chain. It's a really simple one. Usually there's many more steps. But this will do for our discussion here. We have somebody who, who mines or comes up with the raw materials. Someone manufactures those into a finished good and someone distributes them to the buyers. Vertical integration means that this manufacturer purchases a raw materials maker, thus ensuring that they have all the raw materials that come in. For instance, in a steel mill, this would be somebody going back and purchasing the people who mine iron ore. If you can control the key inputs, you can eliminate all competition. The classic example of this one has been De Beers Diamonds. They own the diamond mines in South Africa, and by doing so, they've been able to control the diamond market. Now, that's eroding, but that was there for a while. Okay, next we have lawsuits. This is kind of an underhanded thing, but what monopolies will often do is sue people who try to compete with them. Frivolous lawsuits that tie them up and keep them from being able to produce. Because typically when a business starts, they're cash starved. They need money to keep going. They've invested all their money, now they need to make it back so they can keep going. Lawsuits are a way to delay that process, often resulting in bankruptcy before one gets going. Fifth is acquisition. Acquisition means you go out and you purchase them. You know, say I came up with a new car design that would get 150 miles to the gallon. One of the people I could expect to be knocking on my door would probably, probably be Exxon. You know, we would think of GM, but Exxon might be the one that would pay me the most. The reason for that, they don't want that on the market. So they come up and they purchase you, offer me $10 million to give them the patent on that. I, you know, being a good person, would probably refuse their money. But most often that's not the case, and they can buy the people out. The sixth is economies of scale. Economies of scale is a very big barrier. We've talked about this before. If it's a capital intensive business, sometimes the larger you are, the better you are. Because you can do things more efficiently. If a monopoly truly has economies of scale, they can always produce cheaper than the competitor that tries to come into their market. Examples of this would be Dominion Hope, Allegheny Power where the main price of competition is the setting up of the infrastructure. Once that's already done, it's almost impossible to beat their cost structure. And they can, they can, can I say, 
give that to the customers as lower prices. They may not, but if forced to, they can do that. Thereby, it's almost impossible to come in and compete with them. Okay. In the next section, we're going to move on to the pros and cons of market power and an idea called natural monopoly in a contestable market. All right.